I was in second or third grade. A student in India. I was wearing a uniform, sitting on a wooden chair in front of a desk. This was math class. And the teacher was talking about multiplication. We had all wrote memorized our multiplication tables a couple of months ago, but I didn't understand the relationship between the numbers. And in my half dream state, I had a vision of a number grid. Each color represented a number, and as I multiplied, they layered one on top of each other. And in an instant, multiplication made sense to me. It took me a few more years to realize that I understood and expressed myself visually. My dad was in the Indian Army, and we moved every two to three years, living primarily in the border areas near the Himalayan mountain range. And our schools had no arts education. But art is deeply steeped in Indian culture, and I absorbed it. I loved drawing, sketching, and doodling in my notebooks. In fact, I remember, I spent so much time on my dissected rat's diagram that I forgot that I was sitting next to a dissected rat <laughs> in biology class. In college, I studied physics, chemistry, and biology. I wanted to study cosmic physics, but the math got too abstract for me. I was interested in the really big questions. What is the origin of our universe? And what is our place in it? In 98, I came to the United States on a dependent visa. And that meant that for the next couple of years, I could not go to work. So I decided to use this time to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I have always wanted to be an artist. So I decided to teach myself techniques of art. I started with traditional art materials like paint and canvas. And I quickly grew frustrated because I could not express what I wanted to express. So I used my science education to fuel my arts education. I researched, experimented, and made multiple iterations. I took out all colors from my palette and started painting in black and white. Then I went further. I painted only positive and negative shapes. It took me 10 more years to find a material that could withstand my experimentations. Paper. I started with handmade and watercolor paper and finally discovered Tyvek, a material that has both paper and fabric-like properties and it's primarily used in construction. I began by cutting out the negative and leaving positive space within the paper itself. I realized that this creates interesting patterns, but I control how much and where light passes through this material. Once I understood this, I began to play with light using paper. I use light to direct a viewer's eye to something specific, and I use the shadows to create depth and distance. But this is a very unforgiving medium. No room for mistakes. My new puppy took one swipe, destroyed an entire artwork. So then I thought, what other concepts can I explore using paper? So I took this two-dimensional piece of cut paper, and I manipulated it into a three-dimensional sculpture. I rolled it and let it expand. I curved it and I stretched it. Essentially, I was playing with Tyvek in three-dimensional space. For the next step, I thought, how do I introduce gravity into this mix? So I took this and installed it from the ceiling using transparent fishing wire. Depending on where I hooked the wires, gravity pulled the paper down to give it a specific shape. 
At this point, I was using light, space, and gravity as both physical and conceptual forces within my installations. With each experiment, I moved the material to a new place. My goal is not to create a rendition of a physical phenomena, but to take all of my artistic and creative energy in abstracting the concept. Let me give you a few specific examples. What happens when you take two particles and you collide them at near speeds of light? You get these beautiful energy tracks. And there's a detector in the experiment which can detect some particles and cannot detect some others. So I made a hanging installation inspired by the movement of these particles. The shadow is an added dimension, a nod to the particles that we know exist, but we cannot detect them. What is dark matter? 85% of matter in our universe is dark matter, and scientists don't know what it is. So I made a multi-part hanging installation, and I call it at the edge of ignorance because I visualize knowledge as ever-expanding circles. And as our knowledge increases, so does our understanding of our ignorance. This is an image of a black hole. So I made a multi-layered paper cut installation. If you look closely, I have made many cuts within all of these layers but I have not removed any material from this artwork because nothing escapes a black hole, not light, not even paper. Right now, I'm working on the concept of time. How would you visually describe time? Take a second. I'm going to take you through my thought process, how I research, experiment with different materials, and make multiple iterations to present my ideas visually. I'm looking at different ways that we human beings understand time. The most common way that we all understand time is how we all experience it. We all have memories of our past. We have some control over our future, and we are forever trapped in the present. Each of us here has 24 hours a day, and we're all moving in the same speed, in the same direction from the past into the future. My first iteration was a 12-foot long abstracted river of time. I cut in ripples and arrows within it to show direction. This artwork was cut as a perfect spiral, and in my mind, that's how I was going to install it. In fact, this artwork has been installed in three different locations, and at each location, it has taken on a completely different form. Kind of like the relationship I have with time, I try to plan it and structure it, but it takes its own form and ends up controlling me. Now, I'm experimenting with different materials, and I'm working on multiple prototypes. Here's one. Here's a drawing of a time-based kinetic art sculpture. This artwork explores the relationship between light, time, and the physical presence of a viewer. This artwork will have an array of light bulbs and clocks hanging from the ceiling. And as a viewer walks towards it, the light will glow brighter, and the time will move chaotically, unpredictably. And as the viewer steps away, the light dims down, and time slows down and stops. Reflecting the idea of relative time, this artwork behaves relative to the presence of its viewer. I also want to make large-scale public art installations, 
a viewer will be able to enter this artwork and experience it from within. I made this artwork as a reminder of how we are all forever trapped in the present. Looking back into our past through our memories and looking forward into our future through our dreams. We humans use fundamental concepts like light, space, time, and gravity to understand this world we're living in. But the intricacies of this universe is beyond the comprehension of most people. And I believe the only way to get to a greater understanding is through the power of our imagination.